I think I'm a very childlike person. I guess they use childlike when it's okay and childish when it's bad. So, but I, I call myself childlike. Which I, I remember being very impressed by life when I was a child. I took it all to heart, as I, I would imagine most people. And I remember every detail of it. And, and it was better than the grown-up world. I think I try to keep a, 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 a positive attitude towards what's going to happen. A, a, Whatever you could tell me tomorrow that the earthquake came and knocked down three quarters of the studio and the negative was lost and this and that, and I'll have another idea, at, you know, an hour later as what we should do. And that, to me, is the fun of it. Happy birthday, you, Romantic love uh, will always be a puzzle, but it's... it's um, I guess there are those people who really renounce it that have been hurt or damaged so severely from love because love, as, you, as the saying goes, love kills. It's like fire, you know, and it's, you can really be hurt by it, but you also like to get close to it, get warm. Can I ask a personal question? Yes, sir. You fall in love a lot. Oh, yeah. What do you mean, a lot? Well, I mean, uh, like, uh, more than once in a lifetime. I don't think all people get to have great love. And, but for those people who have great love, they have it once, maybe twice in their lifetime. The curious thing I always find is when you talk to a young person and you say, how many times have you ever really been in love? They always say, well, once, maybe twice. And if you ask someone 60 how many times have been in love, they say once, maybe twice. You know, I'm always in a very precarious situation so that I have to condition myself to think of what my life would be like if suddenly I was starting all over again. I think that's good. That, that's um, a youthful kind of uh, point of view, is that I never feel secure with my position or my finances. I recognize that I can suddenly be in another position. And uh, I think by now, the things that really interest me and, and excite me have nothing to do with my career or my wealth. I'm constantly amazed with more, uh, you know, how uh, what people are thinking about. <clears throat> Watching television commercials as a way to, you know, judge how all the big companies are pitching their, their merchandise. It's a, it's a ter terrifying uh, portrait of, of the country. Ash, I'm talking to you and I. The key thing about me is that I look to the future uh, with tremendous uh, excitement because I, I feel we're living in a time in which, uh, you know, all kinds of things are changing and, and that we can be part of that. And it's a very exciting uh, time to be alive and triply so to be in the field that I'm into. So basically, this vehicle is connected to every aspect of the studio and you have intercom communication as well as the video and audio connection and you could it makes anywhere it is into a, a studio and editing facility I believe that what's happening in the world today is literally the death of the movies it's just happening all around us and it's happening in that way as when children grow taller and you don't notice it the cinema is dying and nobody really is noticing it but I am as sure uh, as that that will continue as I am sure that something new and alive and young who will spring out of that and that maybe some of us can get to be part of that. Oddly enough, I find that I am a sort of shy person and the notion of dealing with actors and trying to coax them into uh, displaying these, this side of them, is, I, I find that I'm not good at doing it. And I can't find anyone else in the company who can do it either. Everyone says, yeah, make it sexy. Make... So I say, okay, you go in there and tell them to do it. <laughs> Nobody can do it. So it must take a certain kind of person that could say, the actors to start going, uh, you know, a little further than I'm at this point prepared to do. But, uh, you know, I'm growing up all the time, so watch out in a couple of years. <laughs> well, I would think that uh, it would be, could be construed as being pornographic by, you know, today's audience, the things I'm thinking about. 
for many years as a younger person, I was very depressed about feeling that I wasn't given uh, a gift that I saw in other people. And now I realize I see those people have come and gone and that I haven't given a peculiar kind of gift. It's just that it wasn't like theirs. It's a gift for spatial thinking, I think, conceptual thinking, rather than linear thinking. It's uh, something to do with being able to juggle lots of different things at the same time and being able to see a totality out there. One more shot. I believe that uh, what, what we call politics today is going to change a lot based on the notion that uh, power, after all, is influence, influence is wealth. The notion of a world cinema that's uh, real, really unified and, uh, and two-way begins to put the power of influence uh, on, on those who can, uh, who can attract the attention and those who can put forth uh, ideas that seem to be sensible or seductive, one or the other. And so it will be politics will empower and influence will really be more what we do in this field, except widened in terms of the whole range of uh, audio, visual, and text going to everybody in the world. This tremendous multiplication of, of communication is going to make the artists the most influential people in the world. So I see a very, um, at, at the end of this phase where airplanes and tanks and those things had the most influence that we'll be, we'll uh, be living in a time when art has the most influence. And for the first time, art not in the employ of the Pope and art not in the employ of the Medicis, but art, uh, art uh, at the service of mankind. That's pretty good. Love and death. Yeah, that's, that covers it. <laughs>